today's big question is, how do we keep kids busy during travel? Oh, you know, we just took this trip down to the coast and back. And so I have a little bit of experience with that. Um, you don't want your kids, or at least I don't want my kid, just staring at a tablet. Although, kind of funny, um, my son was playing with uh, playing Minecraft on a Switch. But he was only allowed well. to use it for so much of the time. Mm -hmm. You know, so I like to have my children gather some little things in their backpack that they would like to play with. Um, that, you know, they have to give some thought to what are they going to take on their trip that they will enjoy playing with. I like right. to give them some snacks and maybe in a little lunch box, you know, little snacks that's supposed to last them the whole trip. So if they get all excited the first 30 minutes of the trip and they eat all their snacks, oh, well. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, well. As long as they know that going in, right? Yeah. Don't yeah. spring it on them. We did yeah. the same thing too. We'd try to have like some sticker books or something that they could do in the car. And we often had a road bingo. Oh, and sure. I, that's you funny. know, yeah, we're like looking too. for things. Yeah. Looking for license plates from different states mm -hmm. or whatnot. Mm -hmm. I do right. have one of those in my car. Yeah. We had a set a long time ago. Like you looked for things like a cow or a stop mm -hmm. sign or a street sign or mile markers and barns and excuse me a lot of things that would just keep them busy while they were looking out the window mm -hmm. and, that, um, and that's the thing it's not um my goal to take a road trip and have my kid not see anything well uh, yeah a few years ago we took a trip to uh from where we live in central texas uh to arizona up to the grand canyon across the uh rocky mountains and down to denver and so I did not want my son to miss out on seeing those things. One of the things we found fun on that trip is um, there, you know, the little signs that warn you of animals that might be showing up on the road, like watch out. Oh, for, right. You know, watch the out. The deer. The deer. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we started getting real amused because we were encountering uh, road signs like watch out for mountain lions or watch oh. out for um, bears or, I mean, yeah, it was really amusing. And then my uh, my daughter said uh, they had seen a sign because she lives in Colorado that warns you to watch out for mountain goats falling or something. Oh. Uh, so, you know, a little research about where you're going can also help you to prepare your children for things to watch for when you're when you're driving. Um, when my kids, my uh, first five kids were young, we listened to audiobooks uh, and we listened to um, lots of kids. Um, musical things. Um, in fact, we were talking about that and we, we broke out in song um, about uh, some songs my kids had listened to, one of my other daughters and I, uh, when yeah. we were driving. So, I mean, there are a lot of ways to keep your kids busy and engaged um, so that they're not just um, stuck with their face in the screen. Right. Well, right, because sometimes that can give you a headache or motion sickness, but we... Um it's we also not them. interactive, you know. If no, you're taking not a at family all. Trip, um, hopefully, the family is interacting with each other on the trip. Right. Well, it's a whole lot more fun if you are. And sometimes we we took the opportunity when we would take a road trip to pull out the paper map and mm -hmm. and show them how to read a map. That was another thing. Or they could, you know, figure out how many more miles to the next stop, or just to learn, you know, how to use a map and. Uh, some of them would keep little travel journals where they could draw pictures and just a composition book is really handy because they can mm -hmm. color and draw and they've got that little space to to work on and just to stick things in receipts or whatever and ways to make it a little more interactive where they can share with each other or write make up a story about something or mm -hmm. yeah keep we used track to play of the games. alphabet. Yeah, and those old-fashioned games where you say something like, um, I'm going to go to the grocery store and I'm going to buy carrots. And the next person says, I went to the grocery store and I bought carrots and apples. And you have to remember. And it keeps going around and around. All the thing, yeah, carrots mm -hmm. and apples and potatoes, yeah. Mm -hmm. All those things are oh. fun. And I know that there are, I know there must be websites now. I was always looking for things, ideas like that out of books. But mm -hmm. um, it's not a bad idea to do a little preparation before you go and have those things ready to pull out. Oh, another thing is like magnetic 
board games. I had a chess player. Oh, so yes. Chess or magnetic checkers. Mm-hmm. And um, I didn't really love taking that because I had so many pieces that I didn't want to move, lose them in the car. But somehow we kept up with all of those things. But it's really worth it to plan a little bit, have mm-hmm. your little, little bag or basket. Or I loved your idea about them packing their backpack. So that the trip can be pleasant for everybody. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Melody. I'm Holly. Happy homeschooling. Hi, this is your host, Melody Gillum. Thank you for listening to the Happy Homeschooler podcast, a transcript maker production. My co-host is Holly williams Erbach. This episode was produced by Matthew Bass and edited by Nora Williams. Our graphic design is by Pete Soloway and our music is by The Great Pangolin. You can find her music on YouTube and Twitter at Kylie Wins. That's K-A-I-L-E-Y Wins. If you'd like to help our podcast grow, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, or wherever you get your podcasts. Or, as always, tell people about us. <laughs>